Hello, my name is Kayla Lishner, and I am the lead writer and editor for Bestelin, the Zenith of Chaos. Bestelin, the Zenith of Chaos, has been hesitantly labeled a strategy RPG simulation game. In the game, the player is asked to play as Bestelin, the deity of order, as he influences four adventurers to ascend the Gagaxian Spire and rid it of the evil that has pulled it from the plains of chaos to the mortal realm. When players first open the game, they will be greeted with the option to choose either a 20 or 40 floor mode, along with the choice to play through the tutorial. As the game begins, players will be able to see the four randomly selected adventurers entering the tower as they begin their ascent to vanquish the evil from the spire. Adventurers are able to ascend the spire as the player chooses the floors to be placed using the floor info card. Floors include the following. Minion floors allow the player to choose the prevalent types of minions that will appear on the floor, along with how high in level the minions will be in comparison to the adventurers. These floors will grant more experience if the player places a minion floor with minions of a higher level than their adventurers. Loot floors are the only way that adventurers can gain abilities and items. Copper, silver, and gold are the levels of loot floors each one granting more powerful abilities than the level before it. The first time a loot floor is placed, all adventurers will receive a random ability from the three abilities they have access to on that level of loot floor. However, if that level of loot floor is placed again, then each adventurer has a chance of receiving an item instead. This item may heal an adventurer, revive a dead adventurer, level an adventurer by one level, or reduce the cooldown on abilities. Heal floors heal all adventurers for a set amount based on which of the three levels of heal floors are placed. These are the only way to heal the adventuring party outside of items and certain adventure abilities. And last but not least, revive floors resurrect one to four dead adventurers depending on which of the three levels of revive floors are placed. These are the only way to revive a dead adventure outside of items and one of the cleric's abilities. Players must manage the level of chaos, which is increased or decreased based on the types of floors the player places. Chaos increase and decrease percentages can be found on the floor info card and vary based on the level of floor placed. If the chaos level becomes too high while the adventurers ascend the spire, there is a chance that a mini boss will spawn that will test the player's strategy. Players can choose to cancel or inspire their adventurers to use abilities at the cost of raising the chaos level. When players reach the top floor of the spire, dependent on the game mode chosen, the player will face the boss of the tower. Once this boss is defeated, the player wins the game and evil, along with the Gagaxian spire, will be removed from the mortal realm. Hello, my name is Corwin Emery. I'm the lead game designer on Bestelin. During the entirety of Final Project, our team made it almost mandatory to meet every day. We first scheduled meetings for three days a week, however each time we would begin to work on our individual tasks, we would log on to Skype, which always ended in a voice chat that would last anywhere from a few minutes to a few hours. The time that we spent together on those voice chats was invaluable in keeping everyone updated, especially with the myriad of changes that occurred during RAM and Final Project. As we went into Final Projects 2 and 3, we were able to meet less, however we tried to log on Skype to ensure that we were all there to clarify or aid each other in our individual assigned tasks. Aside from our meetings and conversations involving our game, we spent a lot of recreational time together as well. We played many games together including Dragon's Crown, Unepic, and Diablo 3, allowing us to get to know each other on a more personal level. These occasions brought the team closer together as a whole and minimized any chance of internal fighting. Towards the end of RAM, our team began to have concerns about what would keep the player entertained during a boss fight. As it stood, the player would have to sit and watch for at least a few minutes as the adventurers used abilities and slowly hacked away at the boss's large pool of hit points. In order to counter this, our team began to work on the idea of deity abilities. These abilities would allow the player to have an indirect impact on the outcome of boss battles. We did not even have the chance to implement these abilities until we were about one week into Final Project 2 though, which means we had even less time to test them. However, as we played our game and had others play our game, 
we noticed a direct change to the reaction of our game. People were having fun because they were now given something to do other than just watch a boss fight play out for about three to six minutes. Floor placement is the main mechanic of our game. From RAM to Final Project 3, we never swayed from the way we planned to implement floor placement. We always had planned on players selecting from four different floors and changing the level of those floors while minding the chaos level resource. We received a lot of push to change the way minion floors worked, mostly to randomize what minions were populated on a minion floor instead of a predetermined set of minions based on the overall class type of the floor. As we began to implement more of our adventurer's abilities, which did not occur until the middle of Final Project 1, we were finally able to prove that our original idea would work and would give the player more ways to apply strategy to the game. My name's Adam Mendenhall, and I'm the lead programmer and lead tester for Bestel in the Zenith of Chaos. As the game developed from our initial idea into a functional prototype, we found ourselves needing to set aside many ideas until the basic gameplay was established. One of the hardest facts we faced was not being able to bring these ideas back into the game, regardless of how much we loved them or felt they were integral to our game. We were well aware and well prepared for this exact situation, but compared to our initial pitch, none of us would have guessed some of our most loved features would be completely redesigned or just disappear altogether. When a player selected a minion floor, our initial concept was that they would be shown a card that gave them a prediction of what they could expect to face. Since this was going to take significant development time, we created a placeholder concept which would allow the player to choose their floors and be given precise feedback on what to expect. This feedback was always planned to exist, but not to be given so blatantly to the player. As our game continued to develop, we agreed that while the prediction system was good, this new, we wanted the players to directly control which abilities were used and when, as this type of system is familiar to a wide range of gamers and has almost come to be expected. This was the focus of intense discussion before we finally decided to take this control away from the player. It's a decision that we've had to defend constantly simply because it has become so standard. But allowing the player this much control made the game too easy, while giving the ability system a learning curve all its own. Late in development, we were given the opportunity to implement functional skeletal meshes with full animation sets to replace the static meshes that had represented adventurers and enemies through all other builds. Although we were thrilled at the prospect, the animation sets never functioned properly and ate up a lot of development time trying to debug them. We sought help everywhere for this issue, but it still remains a problem for us and has forced us to keep the previous matinee-based animations developed in an early alpha build. Our game was one that we had to perpetually defend to instructors, students, and outsiders who all imagined the game as something much grander than it actually was. This caused us to lose sight of one of our biggest goals, which was an increased difficulty level. Although it has been implemented in every build since late alpha, it is not as balanced as we intended and the slightest change to the regular game can drastically affect the harder game. This was a lesson in how to deal with constant negativity in that we were always fighting to prove others wrong to such a degree that we did not fight to start creating the harder difficulty when we intended, and instead waited until we had earned support and trust. In all honesty, our game was able to develop into an end product that was extremely close to what our initial design described and was intended to be, and for that, we're extremely proud. Many of the features that we had originally planned to make it into the game ended up showing up in their intended forms probably about 85 to 90% of the features we wanted, I'd say. As we described before, the way the abilities function changed completely, and we also decided there needed to be more going on during minion battles, and that it would be more consistent to have all the battles in the game follow a round-by-round -round basis, which is why turns were introduced to minion battles as well as boss battles. We also made some sweeping changes to the HUD. Early on, the select floor buttons were a sort of radial menu that popped up and expanded, giving the player their floor options. Now we've taken that element of the HUD and streamlined it with the clearer, easier to use floor card system seen in the latest build of the game. We decided early on that we wanted a unique look for Bestelin. It was agreed upon that a pop-up, storybook-like feel to the visuals would present a nice, novel aesthetic appeal to the game. While aesthetic elements like sound, music, and art aren't things that are focused on early whatsoever in these classes, it was a good idea to have those things in mind so that we could plan for them and decide for sure what we knew was going to work best for our project. Placeholder concept art pieces were used for the first two months of work. Then as we went into the final phases, we started replacing the placeholders with colorful pixel art renditions of the characters and enemies. 
While we weren't able to completely get pixel art in for all the bosses, we think that we were able to come out in the end with a great representation of how the art might evolve in later builds of the game. I went into this project having never touched Adobe Flash, and by the end of it, I feel as though I can at least say I have an intermediate skill with it. As I learned not just how to animate and place objects in the scene, but also how to properly execute action script to manipulate those objects and even get Flash to talk to the U script. I also feel like I learned much more complex scripting methods in Unreal, thanks to having a programmer on our team for a few weeks. I was forced to dig through and dissect a good amount of code that I'd never really had to interact with before. I feel like I've become a much more well-rounded designer over the course of these four months. I felt the final project allowed me to expand my horizons further than previous classes had allowed. Through the help of my teammates, I became much more proficient in Photoshop and also learned to use Scaleform and ActionScript 3 in Flash to create our game's HUD. I was also able to slowly become more independent with Unreal Script as our game needed many custom scripts, not allowing us to pull as heavily from UDK's default scripts. Prior to this project, I was already familiar with ActionScript 2. But as we determined that ActionScript 3 would be more suitable to our project's scale form needs, I learned an almost entirely new way to work within Flash. Also, through sheer volume of code written, I learned new techniques and styles to increase my productivity that seems all too obvious upon reflection. This project was a great opportunity to learn a wide range of skills, including everything that's relevant to starting a game and bringing it into playability, to working on a team for months at a time. I improved my skills with Unreal Script and coding in general, learned about improving my 2D art and spriting skills, and also became familiar with Adobe Flash and Photoshop for helping to build our HUD system. All right, that wraps it up for our post-mortem presentation. Thanks for watching, guys. We've been great.